This conversation is going to help you a lot. The thing that trips most humans up will love you so much. The thing that trips you up the most as you are standing in a, let's say, less than fulfilling or less than satisfying or less than complete now. Because after all, there are more promotions that you want and more money that you want and more freedom that you want and more and more and more and more of a lot of things that you want that you don't see here. You haven't seen the benefit of them, as you say. They're missing from now. When you hold a desire and you focus upon the desire and you stop focusing upon the absence of the desire, the new desire has to fill in the space. It just has to. And if it isn't, if your spaces, meaning your now, meaning what you can hear and see and smell and taste and touch, if your now reality is not filling in with the things that you desire, then your vibration is not quite where you think it is. It's not where you want it to be. And so as your awareness is, as it clearly is, and it's all right, it's the way most are doing is upon what is now and therefore what's missing from now. Your awareness of the missing things in your now prevent them from coming. It's the confusion that most humans find when they begin to become deliberate creators. Because creating is about identifying what is wanted and then letting that identification have been enough and now be in an optimistic mood for the universe to deliver to you the clues and the impulses and the advantages of witnessing those things that you desire feeling flooding moving into your experience but if you are so keenly so acutely aware of the question and the question is where is this that I want then your now holds a vibrational frequency that does not allow you to perceive the clues and the impulses and the motion forward to what you want and so that's why it feels like your desire keeps moving forward but you do not so we're gonna say it in very blunt terms your awareness of now is preventing your now from changing because your attention upon what is is such a dominant vibration so you're offering a vibration mostly about what is and it's full of questions like where is it and what do I need to do differently and why doesn't it come faster and those kinds of things which keeps it from coming because the vibration of the question and the vibration of the answer or the vibration of the asking and the vibration of the receiving are different frequencies and it doesn't mean that the question is a wrong frequency or a bad frequency it means it's a different frequency we're gonna say it in an even more blunt way so that all of you can sort of take it in now is what's getting in the way of what you want to create because now has already been created what you're living now this now reality this is as a result of the energies that you have flowed. In other words, this now reality is old news and it is also the bouncing off place for what is new. And so you've got to get more of your attention on the feeling of where you're going and the feeling of expansion and the feeling of the new and the feeling of adventure. And you've got to get your attention off of the disappointment that now isn't more. Can you hear that? This is really a leading edge conversation. In other words, you are physical beings who are having a conversation, unlike conversations that most anybody has on this planet. You're discovering how to mold your energy, your point of attraction, so that you can receive what you desire. This is deliberate creation at its best. And there are just no more blunt words that we can give to you is that if you are keenly aware of what is in your reality, what is in your reality will keep becoming more of what is in your reality. And so if things are missing and you're focused upon what is, those missing things will continue to be what is, you see. So be a little less in your head and a little more in your emotions. Be a little more general and a little less specific. Be a little more 
allowing and a little less trying so hard, a lot less effort and more imagining and dreaming, but not imagining to create it. You see, step one already took care of it. Lots of step ones already took care of it. And it's all queued up and flowing to you, but you're missing the cues because you're so aware of what is. And we know why we get it. You do too. You've got eyes that see it and ears that hear it and so forth. You are so acutely involved in what is that you don't let it change. So what's the answer to that? The answer is to become more lighthearted, more easy about things, less determined about making things happen, more aware that things have already been made happen and that now you are tuning into them so that you can witness the last unfolding of them. Do you know that the things that you're asking for have been created for a long time and they are getting more and more and more and more ready for you. And so you've got to get more and more and more and more ready for them. And so let's let that more readiness that you are accomplishing be more emotional anticipation and less determination of making it happen. If we had talked to you in the earlier stages, you wouldn't have needed to hear from us because you hadn't forgotten all of this at that time. We would have said, be playful about it and don't worry about it. It's coming. And as you watch children, they seem to understand that to a large extent. It's like you feel like you're on the verge of something that you can't quite hear and that I can't quite hear it is the dominant vibration that's going on within you. Feel the difference between saying, I know I'm being guided and in time I'll receive an impulse and saying there's guidance being given and I can't hear it. Can you feel the difference in those two approaches? And so while it seems like a very hair splitting not very important difference is the difference between being in the question or being in the receptive mode of the answer so do you feel urgency about your motion forward why do you think that you feel an urgency about your motion forward if it is really true and it is that you can be or do or have anything and that you're in the process of figuring out how to let that flow then what do you think the urgency is about? Why are you doing that to yourself? Why are you not just more easy going about it? Why are you not more willing to just let it come to you? The question that we're really asking is why do you keep hammering at the question instead of just relaxing and knowing that the answer will come? When you meditate and you really quiet your mind, when you are in a position to hear something, you'll hear it. And when you're trying to hear it before you're ready, it sounds like that. And feel how when you're trying to make something happen, we really want to get to this place where you all have a sort of, aha, I just got that breakthrough moment because this is the piece for all of you. If you are asking the question, asking the question, asking the question, what is it that I want and why doesn't it come and where is it and when will it be and who will bring it and where will I find it? When you are asking questions, you are not in the mode to receive the answer. So you've got to put some separation between the question mode and the receiving mode. Esther's begun not so long ago because she really gets that. She knows that she's in the receiving mode right now and she's not asking anything. She's leaving all of that to you. But in her own personal life experience, when a question occurs to her, she just writes it down. She's been writing down really what you would call ordinary things like with this new employee that's coming on board. As soon as we get back to San Antonio, what is the best utilization of his talent? Now that's a question that she's asking. Now, if Esther in the moment of asking that question decides that she's going to figure out the answer, she's just going to mess it all up. Because she has that question and no answer, her question messes up the answer. Can you hear what we're getting at? The what I don't know messes up my ability to know. So if I'm trying to make this the moment where I ask the question and hear the answer, what, 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 what? The fact that I think I don't know the answer, and clearly she doesn't know the answer because that's why she's asking the question. So she could stay up all night, every night. She could write pages and pages and pages of what will this person do and come up with very few answers that will be satisfying to her because she's not allowing the answers to come because she's still doing the questions. So, you know, oh, we're getting somewhere, aren't we? So humans 
you work like this it doesn't work out very well for you but this is the way most of you work so you walk around in your physical bodies it's a lovely thing that you do and you ask a question and somebody else offers you an answer you ask questions and you expect an answer you ask a question and you expect an answer it's the way you sort of dialogue with each other and here's something that we really want you to take to heart just for a moment a lot of people that are giving you a lot of answers don't really know the answers but it's not stopping them from giving them to you anyway so what happens is you get used to you become accustomed to just talking about here's my question where's my answer here's my question where's my answer here's my question where's my answer and we want you to understand that the answers are all queued up for you but when you're asking the question you can't receive the answer you got to put separation between what you want to know and when you're ready to hear it that's why sometimes answers come to you in your dream state that's why sometimes they come to you when you're just coming out of meditation you've got to put some distance between that question and answer now how do you put distance between we're talking about vibrational distance are you getting this how do you put vibrational distance between your asking or your problem and your answer or your solution how do you put some distance between it well slumber puts distance between it changing the subjects puts distance between it meditation puts some distance between it making lists of positive aspects about things that are easy for you to write positive aspects about does there are all kinds of things that you can do to get off the subject of that particular problem and we're not asking you to get a lobotomy or to take some heavy dose of some drug we're not asking you to put yourself in a comatose state we're not asking you to relinquish your humanness or your now reality we're just asking you to focus a little less we're just asking you to focus a lot less on the problem and on the asking if we could give you a chart or some sort of a graphic that would give you some sense of how well you've done in asking your questions you would say to us well according to this graph that I'm looking at I never need to speak that question again and that is really what we want to present to you you don't have to keep presenting the question because the universe knows what your question is your vortex holds the answer your inner being knows the answer your inner being knows where you stand in relationship to the answer your inner being is giving you things all day every day and so the question we're asking you is why aren't you receiving the answer because you're too balled up in the question we want you to just give it a rest just give it a rest you've asked the questions you've done the due diligence you've sifted through the contrast you are worthy beyond our ability to express it to you there's not one more thing that you need to do in order to get yourself right about this but you do need to forget about it we've been talking for a long time about step one being when you ask and step two being source answers and step three being you line up with it and receive it and step four being you get really good at that and step five being when you're back in step one and you're not mad at yourself because you accept that the question part of life or the problem part of life is what cues you up for the attraction of the expansion of the greater understanding are you hearing what we're getting at so now feel how this conversation that we're now having about putting separation between asking and receiving between problem and solution between question and answer you can write your questions down but then fold your paper up and put it someplace if you want to keep it somewhere and trust that now you have made your statement that's it for you your job is not to go out there and look hard for a solution to this question because the harder you look for the solution to your problems the more you will hold yourself in that place of not receiving the next idea and the next idea and the next idea pretty good eh okay. really good really good